guys, good morning. Happy Friday. It's Daryl here. It's 4 a.m. bright and early here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I, I felt sad over the last couple of days. Sad and, and, and brokenhearted. I, and, and just looking at our country. Overnight, I watch the news as I tell you guys. And, and the lead story is America at war with America. Americans at war with Americans. Uh, fanatics. Domestic terrorists now at war with our country, threatening to do all sorts of the, the worst harm to our government, an overthrow of our government, a, a, a literal second civil war is where we're at. And as I watch all this, and I watch the man who stirred this pot, I thought about the whole thing, and it, you know, and it seemed like it, it felt like a sense of deja vu that this Trump, this whole thing is nothing new. We have a man striving for power that yearned for power, a true narcissist in the in the real in the truest sense of the word, taking advantage once again of hate and prejudice and, and people with grievances and envy and, and se a sense of, of disin being disenfranchised. That word right there, disenfranchised. It's just it's another word for people that are envious. That are again. This is again. I've talked about this over and over on my channel. People who just constantly judge themselves against everybody else around them and don't have no sense of of self. They're just comparing what, what I've worked so hard and this person has more than me and this person's taking what's mine. And as I've said in my videos, what I've learned over the last fourteen years that is the surest way to lead an unhappy, angry life. Is to constantly, I, I could be totally a different person right now. If I looked at other people my age, 54, and I looked at them, oh, they, that person has a whole house, and that person has a uh, a camper and a boat and three trucks. Look at me. I, you know, I wasted half my life being a drug addict. 20 years of my life I wasted. Oh my God, this sucks. Why are these people ahead of me? Why did I, you know, I would end up hating myself. That's not who I am. I look at what I've learned how much I've learned in my journey. And I couldn't be happier. I, I couldn't be even more happier. And that, that produces more every day. That produces more and brings me more joy. All right. So, like I said, I, I, I think about how do we get here? And it seems so familiar. And, and I started thinking about Pol Pot. I know a little about, about him and the ethnic cleansing like Serbia. Cambodia, um, our first civil war. And it, it seems like this hate and racism, it gets stirred and then it takes on a life of its own. And I started thinking about that. I started thinking about Frankenstein's monster or Trump's monster. And, and what if, what if right now Trump, Trump tried to stop it? You know, if he just came on TV and said, whoa, whoa, you all got to go home. I lost the election. You know, I, I did this for the wrong reasons. I didn't have any evidence. I just didn't want to say, you know, what if he just came flat forward and, and told everybody the truth? Would they believe him? No. I think it's out of control. I think this creation is out of his control now. I think he was the catalyst. And I, I think this, you know, you look back and this is, this is, this is just, this is human nature. Unfortunately, this, this envy, the hate, resentment, racism, you know, looking at somebody else and not being able to, to empathize with them, blaming other people. And it just needs to be stirred in the right way and put in the right context. And it takes on a life of its own. It becomes a movement. And then different groups, we're seeing that now. In, in Washington Wednesday, even now they're talking, the FBI is talking about it. It's a hodgepodge of different groups with different beliefs all coming together. With this resentment that they, they've been disenfranchised and wronged. And you see that, that incredible rage on these people's faces. Beating police officers. Actual uh, police officers beating other police officers. How did we get here? You know, and it all seems so familiar. Now, I don't know if any of you are old enough. In the 80s, I was just starting my first job, my second job. I was... I graduated in 84 at my first job in the late 80s at an architectural office. I remember a man called Morton Downey Jr. For those of you that don't remember him, 
He's on my community page now. There's a short video. If you, you, you could research more and find out more about him. He is, from what I can discern, pretty much the father of using television and public access to bring this hatred alive. He, he called it entertainment. And if you watch this, you'll see. In the, in the end, the, the, the odd thing, in the end, he, he talked about, uh, he really came across as a conservative, as a, as a person very similar to Donald Trump, using violence, and uh, he called it entertainment, like I said, but it, it was just pure hatred focused on other people. And it, it, was, it was the beginning of that, you know, using the electronic mediums to gather these people that were envious and angry and and the people that judged themselves against other people that held other people accountable for all their problems and that was the beginning of it i remember working for an architectural office and i remember working i went to a trade school because i my i lost my father i got social security money and i used that money to go to a technical school i would have loved to go to college for four years but i couldn't afford it I was in the middle. I was one of those people trapped in the middle that I, I had enough money where I I didn't get grants and I, I didn't have enough money to pay for it. Anyway, I went to technical school and I did great. And I got hired right away into an architectural firm. But I was working with a lot of people of, of, of means, of people that went to Yale, Harvard. There was these young kids that would work with us. Not young kids, but they were younger than me. They were juniors and seniors in college uh, in places like Syracuse and, and Browns and... Uh, Rutgers and I worked with them and they loved Morton Downey Jr. They were young white men and they just loved the anger and hatred that this guy spewed. I still remember that. And it's funny, this all came back to me recently because as I watched these these people and this anger and these the, this hatred, I, I was like, I, I've seen this before. You know, Donald Trump is not the beginning of this. This this has been around the whole time. This is Donald Trump is just another catalyst, another narcissist, another uh, another bad, selfish, narcissistic, arrogant person in search of power by using what he can from the masses, by, by, by generating hate and anger and disenfranchisement and organizing it and you and, and Trump used it to get votes, to get to get where he is. That, that's all it's about. He, he used this group of people to elevate him to power. He, does, he, does he believe in what he's saying? Yeah, somewhat. But they were a catalyst to get him what he really wanted was power. And we've seen this. We've seen this over and over all through history. This is nothing new. And, and the scary thing, like I said, is I, I believe this thing is taken on a life of its own like it always does. It just takes off. It's like like Frankenstein's monster. I, I don't think it. I don't know if it can be stopped at this point until it, it reaches its conclusion, whatever that is. And it's probably going to be. It's probably going to be ugly. That's all I can say here without getting losing my advertising. Um, you know, I think people need to. Unfortunately, they need to learn the hard way, um, like with the first civil war. Um. I think if if Trump came on TV right now and just denied it all and said, I made a mistake, I lost the election, I, I think it's out of his hands. I think that's the scary thing is it's out of his hands right now. It's grown to such a point that these people would now, he would just become another casualty of, of this monster they've created, of this uh, boogeyman they created. They would look at him and say that somehow he's been, uh, you know, he's been taken captive by the deep state. Or this is a computer-generated gener image by the deep state. This isn't the real Donald Trump. The real Donald Trump would never say that. I, th I truly think that this bunch of people, this 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 creation, is now grown <laughs> into Frank into not Frankenstein mo Frankenstein's monster, but Trump's monster. And we're gonna have to deal with it. And this is the lesson we learned. We gotta be more careful. We gotta think. Before we put into elevate to, to such a level of power that we can't just put anybody in as president. Somebody that just makes us feel good with our base emotional instincts. 
hopefully we'll learn from this. All right, I'll be back later with another video. You guys have a good Friday.